Hey there, Storm fans, Bryant Cook. As I start to record this video, it is 10 p.m. I've had quite the day. To give you a little bit of an idea, I got my first flat tire riding my road bike. If you're unaware that I ride a road bike, you should definitely listen to me on the Eternal Glory podcast. I'm wearing that hoodie tonight. Uh, and I tried to fix that tire on my own. Admittedly, it took me way longer than I would like to admit to fix that tire. I cut my hand in the process. It's been an experience, but now I'm recording this video that will go live tomorrow because I don't have a backlog. So late night legacy, that's what we're doing. And I'm playing an idea that I've had for some time now, which is no tendrils of agony in the main deck. If you watched the previous video, that's the Epic Storm 13.3. You can find that video in the card above. I talk about in the deck tech, maybe not playing it right. And well, I'm going to do it tonight. Uh, it's not that I think it's right. It's just I want to see how it is. Like, it might be right. It might not be. And I just haven't tested this ever since the Luris era of Legacy. So let's reevaluate that a little bit. Well, what do we gain from cutting the main deck Tendrils of Agony? I think that's a pretty crucial question. So you get to play a third main deck copy of Galvanic Relay. There we go. The zoom finally worked. Boom. So why is this a benefit? Well, it makes you better against the best decks in the format, like Delver, for example, or these four or five color piles. So Galvanic Relay helps you out there. It's another action spell. We cut Ponder, so we're now really all in on Galvanic Relay, if you think about it. And this is just another payoff spell. The downside is you no longer have Tendrils of Agony to get with Wishclaw Talisman in the main deck, which is a feature of Wishclaw. That said, I feel like the matchups where that's relevant have gone down because you can't just sit with a Wishclaw and play against control decks anymore due to prismatic ending. And that's that was originally the real the original function behind Wishclaw and the tendrils in the main. So that's gone, but now we have a different storm spell. We have Galvanic Relay. So even maybe you can't win the game, but you can put, you know, a whole bunch of cards in exile, give them a Wishclaw, that sort of thing. So we're gonna try this out tonight. But what else do you gain by cutting tendrils from the main deck? So if we're moving a Galvanic Relay to the main deck, that means that we've opened up a sideboard slot. In that previous video, which is this deck list here, we get to run two Crash, we still have the Thoughtseize, we gain Grape Shot, all this good stuff. Well, tonight we're playing two Surgical Extraction. What do we lose by playing Surgical Extraction? I've lost the Grape Shot and then the slot that was available by moving Galvanic Relay to the main deck. But we love Grape Shot. Grape Shot is literally my favorite magic card of all time. Why would I cut it? Well, I'm more of a realist when it comes to deck building. Just because something is my favorite card doesn't mean that it deserves the slot. And not that Grape Shot's bad, but it's only good against Veil of Summer decks. You can wish for it to pick off a Thalia or a Collector Oof, something along those lines. It can theoretically kill a Karn. If you watch Brian Koval's TES video, he actually killed an opponent with it. That said, if you also go back and watch it, technically Tendrils would have gotten the job done there too. But, you know, it's a really fun card. It always feels really good to win with, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like the actual functionality of the card, the percentage used is really low. So instead tonight, we're going to try Surgical Extraction. Well, what does Surgical Extraction fix? I think that's a question you have to ask yourself before you're willing to play the card. So if you look at what TS is good against, it's really fair blue. That's what we beat. And we lose a lot to combo decks that are faster because TES can play to the speed of the matchup, but it's often tougher to beat the turbo combo decks of the format because they're just built to always go faster. So if we play something like Surgical Extraction in the board, we can theoretically keep up with those super fast combo decks like Oops All Spells, Black Red Reanimator, The Epic Gamble. So those are matchups where Surgical is interesting. That said, let me check my spreadsheet real quick. I don't want to lie to you all, but the last time, because this came up in a conversation recently, I'm pulling up my spreadsheet, Black Red Reanimator, over, okay, 18 matches against Black Red Reanimator. I am at a 72.22 uh, win percentage against Black Red Reanimator. I mean, that's pretty good. That's a total of 13 and 5. You could argue that's a small sample, and I would agree with you. But 72% as of right now, do I need Surgical Extraction for Black Red Reanimator specifically? Probably not. Realistically, I don't need it. That said, we are dogs to oops all spells, like less than 
and the epic gamble is just consistently faster. So with when you're boarding or when you're playing three main deck relay, you need cards to board out in matchups where it's bad. And that's sort of where surgicals come in is they kind of swap with relay in the matchups that they're bad, which is a really nice feature of the card. And then you can still board in a chain of vapor because you need chain of vapor versus oops all spells because they have lay line of sanctity. It's still good against black red reanimator. I would actually board both copies of chain there and you just get a little bit more you know to do with your deck so this is what we're going to do tonight i don't know how good it is but it's something that i've been wanting to try i haven't even talked about it yet with alex mckinley i'm kind of just going against everyone on this one just testing something that i think might have potential that's the idea here and i'm sure you're sick of listening to me ramble it's already late i'm just going to hop on in and play some magic so i can get this video done i appreciate you watching i really do stick around for the first round if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsperm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. All right, round number one, we are facing Artisan, who tends to play a lot of Doomsday. Galvanic Relay is a card I am interested in the matchup. That said, it requires the opponent to have kept a hand that is looking to play a control game or a discard game against us. I don't know how good this actually is. It's kind of slow. Um... I do think I'm going to keep it, but I wouldn't be surprised if I lost game number one. Blue to Delta, surprise, surprise. And Duress. I think the correct pick here is actually Dark Ritual. Let's see what the opponent does. They take the Wish Claw. Okay. Draw for turn. And we drew another Wish Claw. Welcome to the Wish Claw Talisman bug. Pass the turn. Six cards in the opponent's hand. Ponder. They did not shuffle. They grab a polluted delta. Five in hand. And a personal tutor to put Doomsday on top. So we have to move sooner rather than later. Four cards in the opponent's hand. Draw. Another wish claw. We definitely did not need that. Grab the Underground Sea, cast the Dark Ritual. They have four in hand. Force Pitching Force. Pass. Okay. So they have a Doomsday here. If I draw a Lion's Eye Diamond, I believe we win the game. Because I can cast Echo of Aeons and deck my opponent. Come on, deck, please give me a Lion's Eye Diamond. Pretty please. Lion's Eye Diamond? No dice. We're dead. There's no reason that we should get to live here. Pass the turn. I guess they have the days anyway. So the Lion's Eye Diamond would not have been good enough. And it's funny because, like, Days isn't even a four of anymore. Like, most lists play one, maybe two. And that'll do. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring in Surgicals. I think that they're at least reasonable enough with messing up the Doomsday Pile. Or just, like, removing forces or peaking. And I think I actually like three real. I, I know that that game, they look bad. But our opponent's about to board in Force and Negation. One of the easiest ways that we can win this matchup is just relaying them to death. So the question is, what do you board out? Right? Like, it's kind of tough. Uh, do you just keep with Triple Relay? Do you... I don't know. Like, that. it's really tough. I do think Relay is what we want, but maybe we don't board in the Surgicals. I'm not sure. It does seem nice messing up a doomsday pile. Could try boarding down one of each mocks. 
I guess I'll try this. I don't know how I feel about it, but we'll see. Game two, we're on the play. This is certainly a keep. Opponent with a mulligan to six, and then to five. Okay. We're just going to play the Mire and pass. On their end step, we're looking to cast the Brainstorm. Underground C, Dark Ritual. Doomsday already, wow. Fast hand. 50 cards enter exile, Force of Negation, one Force of Will. Three force of negations, one force of will, two force of will, three force of will, and there's one in the pile. Deep analysis and is in exile. Okay. Fetch. Let's grab underground sea, I guess. Cast brainstorm. All right. Um, put the veil on top. Draw, diamond, diamond, lotus petal, and then we're going to try a relay. Only for four. You might think to yourself, why not surgical here? I think I want to try to get them. Well, I guess their diamond is in exile, so maybe that's a mistake. Because they're not likely to go for a Lion's Eye Diamond win here. And I did not hit any payoffs. Maybe I should have thought that through. Is this the spot where I respond? We know that they have a force. I guess I'll attempt a Surgical Street Wraith. Maybe Force of Will. I mean, we expected them to do that. And now they have Oracle. Yep. I don't know if there is a real avenue for me there. It's just a tough matchup. Also, you could have argued that maybe I'm not even supposed to board in Surgical. I'm not sure. But we're going to head over to match number two. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the draw. I have no idea what our opponent plays, so I'm going to keep this hand. I feel like it's well-rounded enough, has some gameplay to it, and uh, we're going to see what we can do here. Scalding Tarn. So if this is Blue-Red Delver, I love a hand that has Galvanic Relay in it because it's just the best card in the matchup against them. So good that we don't even play Cyborg cards for Delver anymore. And here we see a fetch. For a mountain. Okay. Is this goblins? It is! Wow, okay. Wasn't expecting this for a goblin pile driver. So the question is, do I brainstorm now or do I untap and cast it? I think I'm going to untap. Draw. Another verdant. Hoping for another uh, zero for this opal. Let's play the brainstorm. Hello. So we can probably get rid of Galvanic Relay and the land. Fetch. I guess I could have also. Uh, I mean, I could still do something else. I don't have to commit to any lines here. Right of Flame. Lotus Petal, Opal, or, um, Diamond, it doesn't matter. I can't talk. Mox Opal. I won't lie, I definitely chose this deck tonight because I was like, it's easy enough for me to play, and, uh, yeah. 
I didn't want to put too much brain power into it this late. So we have five mana floating. I can Galvanic Relay for seven. And then Burning Wish would be from eight. Tendrils would be nine. That puts them at one. I don't really feel like that's worth it. I almost feel like instead what I should do here is Burning Wish will go get Echo of Aeons. We'll then Galvanic Relay, get eight cards here, and then flash back the Echo. Resolving the Relay. Float some blue. Echo. Pass the turn. And we have quite the exile zone. They play a wasteland, true thing. The Horde Master. They attack with the Goblin Pile Driver. We'll take two. And now we get to party. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Bobble. Tap this underground seed for a black. We'll play Dark Ritual. Tap the opal for blue. Brainstorm. Just looking to increase storm count here. Put back a land and relay. Play another bobble. From Mox, we can imprint this galvanic relay. Play another Dark Ritual. Play land for turn. Fetch down to 15 life. Grab this volcanic island. My... Well, I guess we could play Wish Claw. I was going to say, why not? Let's cast Brainstorm. That was not what we needed. Doesn't matter, though. Burning Wish. Yes. Grab the Tendrils. And then use these two copies of Lotus Petal to cast it. And game number one goes to us. First game victory. It only took until match two. That's a turn three. In this matchup, I don't think that Veil of Summer ends up being spectacular. They can have things like Cyborg Thoughtseize, but I don't think that's really what you should prepare for. Uh, Abrupt Decay seems reasonable. And then it comes down to, how do you feel about Crash? Do you think that they have something like Thorn of Amnethyst or Chalice of the Void? I think it's pretty free to board in at least one copy over a relay here. Um... Yeah, let's try this out. Game number two, we will keep this. We have Burning Wish for Pulverize, as well as Wishclaw Talisman for Ad Nauseam. Opponent with a very fast mulligan to five. Cavern of Souls. Goblin. Do the classic play of Goblin Lackey. Brainstorm. I'm just going to pass the turn here. You might be thinking, why not accelerate into Wishclaw? That's a that's an acceptable line. I don't want it to make you think it's a bad line. But they do have things like Goblin Trash Master and stuff like that, where if I know that they have a lackey that's going to connect, I'm less likely to do that when instead I can just play Brainstorm. Had I not drawn the Brainstorm, I would have considered playing the turn one Wishclaw. Sling Gang Lieutenant, you've got it. Wasteland, and they have two in hand now. Take a draw. Be verdant. I'm going to cast this brainstorm. Yeah, not the best. Put back a verdant and burning wish. Fetch. Grab Bayou. Bromox. Imprint Relay, Burning Wish. I think I'm somewhat tempted here to get Peer into the Abyss. So I'd take a hit for at least four. That puts me to 13. Peer would put me to seven. So if I get wasted, play my land, Dark Ritual, I have six mana next turn. Do I think I'm more likely to draw a Mana Source? Or went off of an echo. I think I'm going to just trust that my deck will draw a mana source. Okay. Land number three for the opponent. 
Ouch. Goblin Lackey triggers. They have two cards in hand. Goblin Ringleader. They find the Horde Master and Goblin Pile Driver. So if I don't win on my turn, I'm probably dead. They waste me. We're really just looking to draw anything that is plus one mana. They play the Pile Driver. Two in hand. So now if I cast Peer, I go to six, and they have six goblins. So I think Peer's actually shut off. Maybe I was supposed to get Echo, and I drew the plus one mana. Stinks. I'm just going to put Peer on the stack anyway, make them make the right play. Play Opal. Yep. I am dead. We lost to their mulligan to five. So you might be thinking, Bryant, that was dumb. Why would you peer if you knew that they were dead? Sometimes you just have to play to your opponent's making a mistake. It's just one of the truths of this format. I think if anything was a mistake that game, it was maybe not getting the Echo of Aeons. So this is a turn two relay. Is that good enough? I think it's fine. Let's keep this. I like having Abrupt Decay to answer Chalice of the Void or Thorn or anything like that. An opponent mulligans all the way down to three cards. Okay. Misty passed the turn. Mountain and a lackey. We do have Abrupt Decay. Draw. You find a bobble. So you might be thinking, why not just relay this turn and then decay the lackey later? I think that's pretty risky, and you don't gain a whole lot by deciding on that path. So I'm going to just clear the lackey now. They're on three cards. They have Wasteland. They destroy our underground sea. Pass the turn. Draw diamond. So I could go all in on an echo here. That's a little too uh, risky for me. Instead, I'm going to just play out this bobble. Let's look at their top card. Matron. I'm not too worried about them drawing a matron, so I'm going to just pass the turn. Draw off the bobble. Beautiful. They have to pass. There's just no reason to play into something that could potentially harm us here. And I'm going to just pass the turn again. You might think that I'm being dangerous or uh, giving my opponent too much time here. The real thing about this line is I am being disciplined because there's no reason to give our opponent the potential to beat me because I felt anxious. All right, so we're going to play out these baubles, throw mocks, Galvanic Relay for five. In our opponent's upkeep, let's look at their top card. So they are drawing land number two here. Goblin Crater Maker, lovely. We got their top card. So they have land number three coming up. We have Ad Nauseam in Exile. So good. Draw for turn. Look at that. So we can actually Burning Wish for the Thoughtseize here. Okay, Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, and you might think, why Burning Wish for Thoughtseize? If our opponent has Mind Break Trap, I don't want to just throw away the match. That's really the reason why. And they've got nothing. We're at 16. We'll add some black mana. Ad Nauseam from 16. Okay, Crash, Dark Ritual. We're at seven. We're at one. I'll stop at one. Dark ritual. Dark ritual. Tap this opal for a red. Play an opal. Cast this burning wish. 
Yes. Grab the tendrils and cast it for lethal. We have picked up a match victory over goblins. Sweet. Round number three coming up. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, so we are facing the Epic Storm most likely. Our opponent's goldfish history is full of it. We're on the play, so we're looking for a fast hand. This hand, I think, is likely too slow despite having the Veil of Summer. I'm going to go to six. I think maybe we keep this. Bottom the right. Play the mire. So the issue with this is that I've just published a list with Grape Shot. Our opponent could be on that list, and I don't have Grape Shot in mind. So if that's the case, I'm at a severe disadvantage in the mirror. That's a right of flame. Right of flame. The Lotus Petal. Wish Claw. Galvanic Relay. They have five cards coming off the top. I mean, that's certainly a good turn one. The question is, should I cycle both Veil of Summers here? Grab the Bayou. Cycle one Veil. I think I'm supposed to cycle both. Draw? Uh-oh. Draw for turn? So you're saying there's a chance. Cast Brainstorm. So I can echo here. <sighs> no mana floating. My odds of winning here are incredibly low. No mana floating, no tendrils in my main deck. Grab the Echo Veons. Spin, baby. And this does not win the game. Play the diamond. Pass the turn. So not only do they have five mana with Wishclaw in play, they have double Wishclaw in play. This should be an easy victory for our opponent. Okay. They have triple Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm good to pick it up here. So the game plan for the opponent is that they're going to just go get Peer into the Abyss, which doesn't fizzle. All right, so we want to get rid of these relays. I'm going to bring in Thought Season Two Surgicals. Let's submit. On the play. We found a Surgical. I think I'm going to keep this. They're on seven as well. The issue here is that I'm showing them that I boarded in Surgical. Burning Wish. Grab the Echo. Flashback. Play Diamond. Pass the turn. I cannot add Nauseam on my turn. It's worth noting that I do not have enough mana. Chromox and Prince are right of Flame. I would have liked for them to cast that right of Flame. That's a wish claw. Opal. Okay, take a draw. That does not get the job done. Too many lands. We're only playing 12 and, you know, four lands in hand after an echo. Our opponent, like, most certainly has a turn to ad nauseum here. I think once again, I'm just pressured here to echo. Okay, spin. There's a Veil of Summer. And I cannot win the game. 
I have to pass the turn. Our opponent has seven cards in hand and double wish claw once again. I am about to be one and two. So they play Opal into a Chrome Mox. Another Opal. They're giving back Wish Claw. Mine's a Diamond. Burning Wish, sure thing. They select Peer into the Abyss. Remove their Diamonds. They're boarded in one crash, one thought sees. Yeah, that I means what the cyborg guide says to do. We are likely still dead here. I'd be surprised if somehow we lived. I mean, they have three mana and a wish claw. Like, Dark Ritual Tendrils does it. Right of Flame. All right, they're just showboating at this point. I'm going to concede. We are one and two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four on the play. Keep. Wow, what a hand. Let's see Meyer pass the turn. Delta. Into Volcanic Island, Dragon's Ridge Channeler, you've got it. Take a draw. Okay. Fetch. Right of Flame. Go get Bayou. Veil of Summer. That resolves. So we could make 12 goblins here. Question is, is that enough? I think I'd rather just relay. Or not relay, uh, echo. Because with three relays in her deck, floating blue red just becomes incredibly dangerous. Okay. It's from six. Ooh, punish for floating red. I mean, this isn't a bad hand. Maybe I fell in love with Relay too much. Brainstorm. Okay, and Delver of Secrets. They attack for one. We're at 17. Burning Wish. Let's play a Claw. And that resolves. Perfect. Pass the turn. Delver does not flip. Channel our number three, Wasteland. Goodbye, Taiga. Which is actually somewhat relevant when I'm sitting on Double Veil of Summer. We're at 15 life. They have five in hand. Beautiful draw step there. Play out the Verdant. I think we just lead on a veil here. And then it just immediately resolves. I th believe we can cast Peer into the Abyss. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. So we have five mana here. I would go down to four to go get Lion's Eye Diamond, which would bring us up to seven, eight, nine. That's exactly enough mana to go straight into the Abyss. Okay. Let's add some mana. Target me. I'm still out of bolt range. So far this league, I mean, we are in match number four. The lack of main deck tendrils has not come up yet. Ritual. Ritual. Play the opal. Right of Flame, Right of Flame, Right of Flame, Burning Wish. Grab the Tendrils, target you. Okay, so game one over Delver goes to us. The plan right now is just board in two decay, board out one of each mocks, and that's it.
You could board out uh, an ad nauseum as well instead and keep like chrome mocks for relay. I don't hate that. I mean, the, the matchup's just not about ad nauseum. Let's try this. Game two, we've opened up sort of a clunky hand. I think that we can do better. Like, this is one of those hands that you keep and then you sit there, do nothing for several turns, and just lose. This hand is a lot better. Keep, and we're going to get rid of the you wish claw. They play a Scalding Tarn and pass. Draw for turn. Lotus Petal. We match their Tarn and send it right back. Question is, am I supposed to brainstorm here? I think you just pass. Allow the brainstorm to happen. If you brainstorm there, they can daze you and then replay the Volcanic. So it's just terrible. Plus Wasteland, like, there's a couple ways you get burned there. Exactly. Pass back. Draw for turn. Taiga. I think I'm willing to cycle Bobble. No need to play out the Taiga yet. Just playing directly into Wasteland doesn't make any sense. That's a channeler. Look at our top card. I am interested in Veil of Summer. Draw off the bobble. Draw for turn. Echo of Aeons. What a lovely card. Lotus Petal. Chrome Mox. Imprint this Brainstorm. Let's cast the Veil. That finds a forcible pitching Murktide Regent. They have three in hand. Diamond. Let's fetch. So here we have our opponent in a pretty good trap. So I can Burning Wish for empty, and if they don't force the empty, I can Echo. Track this for three blue. Burning Wish on the stacks from six. This resolves. Grab Empty the Warrens. Fourteen Goblins. Okay. Pass the turn. Brainstorm. They trigger the Dragon's Rage Channeler. They keep a card on top. That is not what I wanted to see here. I have a feeling that the festivities are about to end. Volcanic Island. Two mana. What are you doing? Rough. That is very rough. Okay. So I still have this Echo. They have two cards in hand. Am I supposed to just play this into days here? Or do I untap and let them Pyroblast me? I think I'm just going to cast it. If I get dazed, I get dazed. Props to them. I mean, they found the rough tumble. They had force pitch force. Wow. Okay. So if I had just flashback the echo, they would have forced me. And then I took the line that beats that. And then they found the rough tumble. So props to the opponent. They got to do their thing. But now we get to be on the play for game number three. Resubmit. Game three. Wow. So this hand is a single mana source away from Veil into Burning Wish. I think we keep this. From Mox. And print the Abrupt Decay. Lion's Eye Diamond. Mox Opal. Play the Burning Wish. Beautiful. So now we just grab the Echo and we pass the turn. No need to play out this diamond right here. 
Because if we get hit by Meltdown, you don't want to lose everything. Made right us pass the turn. So we can just Veil Echo here, but if they have Force Pyroblast, I lose, so I'm going to just sit tight. And step Brainstorm. Land number two. A Mycin's Terse. Okay. So they're not holding open Pyroblast. They have six in hand. Draw. Mire. Veil of Summer. That resolved. Wow. So they just had nothing? Sacrifices for blue. Flashback. They're likely to eat my Lion's Eye Diamond here, and I completely understand. Yep. So now we have Storm 4 drawing fresh 7. Holy moly. Let's brainstorm, see what we can find. Galvanic Relay is certainly very good here. I've played the Bloodstained Mire this turn. So I guess I could try to relay off of... Brainstorm, sack the diamond? I don't know how much I actually like that. It doesn't feel good to me. They have seven in hand. Tough call here. Part of me wonders if I should also just like brainstorm fetch. Get rid of... It's tough. Get rid of these, I think. All right. Underground C. Brainstorms from six. Still just short here. Put back these two. I'm going to end up spinning the wheel on Echo again. Guess I'm imprinting the other decay. I put back Veil so it doesn't get hit by Surgical, but now they can potentially Surgical or Relay. It's from 10. And this is going to be a gigantic Galvanic Relay. Red, Rite of Flame, Rite of Flame. Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox. No. And then Galvanic Relay for 16. It seems decent to me. And their upkeep, we will Mishra's Bobble. Murktide Regent, okay. They're using Brainstorm. I'll look at their top card. They find Wasteland, sure. They play the Wasteland. Ouch. Delver, and they have an Unlicensed Hearse that can hit double Rite of Flame, and that will uh, make the Rite of Flame in Exile make less mana. Draw for turn. Play the Badlands. Rite of Flame. Surprise, surprise. Why did that shrink back down? That was annoying. Right of flame. Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. And our opponent just conceded. Sweet. Two and two, let's see if we can get match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, I have no idea what our opponent's playing. The last time that I faced them, they were on Grixis Control, and if that's the case, I really, really like Galvanic Relay. Strong. 
Pre Wraith. Death Shadow. Oh, it's Doomsday. Lovely. I guess I'm going to go 2 3. Doomsday is a really, really poor matchup for the Epic Storm. It seems like everybody's on this deck nowadays. Okay, pass the turn. It stinks because, like, when you look at this video, you're going to look at games, uh, this game, and then game one, match one, where I had double relay, and then the rest of her hand just didn't do anything. But relay is actually super good in this matchup. It's just I drew hands where they were a little clunky. Like, had I known I was facing Doomsday, I would not have kept this hand. Okay, I'm going to fetch to thin here. Like, I plan on playing Wishclaw anyway, and I just can't afford to draw another land if I can help it. Okay. Let's cast that. Interesting. Hmm. Can get rid of at least one relay here. I will play a Bobble. You might be thinking, why not hold it for the relay? Well, it's Doomsday. They could have just untap and put Doomsday on the stack, and then this relay is a blank piece of cardboard, and I held the Mishra's Bobble because of it. They fetch. Let's look at their top card. The third Underground Sea, which does in fact cast Doomsday. Lotus Petal. Four mana. Deep analysis targeting them. You've got it. Lotus Petal. Down to four in hand. Personal Tutor. They have found the Doomsday with three in hand. Draw off the Bobble. Another Veil. And another Relay. Okay. Play the Wish Claw. We just have to pass the turn here. I could have Burning Wish for Thoughtseize, but their card that matters is on top of their deck. They have the land. We know that they have Deep Analysis already in the graveyard, so if they have a Dark Ritual, I'm probably dead. Interesting. Do you have Brainstorm in hand? Is that what that Deep Analysis meant? Because you were just looking for cards to put back with the Brainstorm? They have three in hand. They are going to go to six life here. One force of will. So they're going to cycle into the brainstorm. Okay. We're dead. Yep. They've got me. Funky draws are not going to compete with Doomsday. All right, so let's bring in the surgicals again. I, I at least want to try this. Like, if it ends up being terrible, at least I know not to do it in the future. Um, I'm going to try boarding down one relay, though, and then one opal. On the play. Not allowed to keep that. Ugh, what are these hands? I can't keep this. Going to five. So the plan here is pray to draw Lion's Eye Diamond. Bayou, Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. They have a petal of their own. Cool. Oppos <clears throat> Excuse me. Opposition Agent. Shield Dread. So they boarded that in. Three Force of Negations right there. Four Force of Negation. One Force of Will. Two Force of Will. Three Force of Will. So they have one Force of Will in hand or in their pile. I'm going to cycle a Veil of Summer here. See if I can potentially draw into that diamond. You draw into Wishclaw Talisman. And draw for turn. Dark Ritual. Play that Wish Claw. 
Let's go grab the diamond. Play diamond. Veil of Summer. So they force here. And now we're going to redraw. And I find surgical. I'm probably just dead. Brainstorms from seven. I'm gonna hide these two on top. I think I'm supposed to play out the opal here. I just hope for some reason that the opponent can't kill me. Three Lotus Petals are in exile. The Lion's Eye Diamond is not in exile. That's worth noting. Yeah, you have a dress. Surgical is down. All right, so Bob will look at their hand. Or their top card, I mean. It's the Doomsday. Not really the card we wanted to see on top of their deck. Force of Will is what we were hoping for. So we know that they have Force. They're drawing Doomsday. We're going to draw Burning Wish, Dark Ritual, then a random card for turn. Not a bad one. Okay. Dark Ritual. See if they force this. That happens. Play Burning Wish. Come on, force it. Veil of Summer, and then we get Thought Seize for the Oracle. I'd be very mad if Oracle's their bottom card. Target you. Hey, Thought Seize coming up with a game victory. Can't believe that. All right. We stole a game from Doomsday. Let's try to get another. And I'm mulligan to five nonetheless. I think I'm going to keep this. Draw for turn. We find surgical. Misty rainforest. Interesting. They tap for a black and then stopped. Now I'm feeling like an idiot for not playing out my pedal. Oh, they're going to op agent me. Uh, yep. Yeah, you got it. They have three in hand. I drew another brainstorm. I'm going to just pass the turn here. They play a brainstorm. Think I'm just priced into playing the veil. Another right of flame. We follow the 16. They played my underground C. Draw for turn. Pass. Doomsday. Yeah, there's zero chance we win this one. Yep. Draw for turn. Another veil. But surgical to doomsday. I just want to mess up their pile. They're not going to go all in when they know that I have surgical in hand. They made a double oracle pile this time. I'm good to pick it up. All right, so we went 2-3. We let two losses to Doomsday. I'm not surprised by that. Like, our deck just doesn't beat that matchup. So one thing I did think that game three was if I had a relay there instead of the surgical, we were actually in, you know, decent shape. Instead, having the surgical was just terrible. So we definitely don't... I don't think I want the surgicals against Doomsday. It was an experiment. I don't think it worked out. I mean, the surgicals also weren't great against... Uh, the mirror match and not having grape shot there forced me to play faster than I normally would have otherwise, because 
our opponent had the inevitability, right? Like they have Veil of Summers that, you know, stop me from winning. And I have Veil of Summers that don't really matter that much to them. So it put me at a really big disadvantage. So I felt like I had to push. And when I pushed, I fizzled. I just never really drew what I needed. So I was definitely punished in those matchups. But really the thing about this league was, did we miss main deck Tendrils of Agony? I don't think we did. Like, it never really came up. It is a small sample size. It's only five matches. But I think Triple Relay could be the future. I'm just going to throw that out there. I think it could be what we should be doing. I realize that's a weird statement to make, but I don't know if we necessarily need the Tendrils, and we haven't reevaluated it in some time. With those extra slots, do these need to be Surgical Extraction? No, they could be something else. Uh, you might ask, could they be something for your blue matchups? I don't think we need anything for those matchups. Our main deck is built to beat those decks. So we want cards on our sideboard that can help in problematic matchups, which is why I was interested today in testing the surgical to begin with. We picked up crashes for Moon Stompy recently. These surgicals need to be for matchups where we can actually improve. I don't know if Grape Shot actually is worth playing, but it's certainly an option you can run. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd be very interested in that. Uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Keep storming. All that good stuff. Have a good night. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.